In New York on June 17th, thousands marked Father's Day by taking part in a silent march against racial profiling. The main target of the protest was the New York Police Department's controversial practice of stop and frisk. The stop and frisk policy allows police to stop anyone they deem suspicious, and supporters, including New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, say it's an effective crime-fighting strategy. But critics say it amounts to racial profiling. According to the police department's own records made public through lawsuits, the vast majority of the nearly 700,000 people stopped last year were black and Latino, and over 90% were innocent. Here are some of the voices of the thousands that took part. I'm in here to stop, stop and frisk because it's become institutionalized in the black and Latino communities. And I want my son to be here so that, you know, he, he can see that this is not a normal thing to do. Well, stop and frisk has a big impact on the community because it has a negative impact because it gets, gets children to think that they're supposed to be stopped by the police at any time. You go through school, they have the metal detectors, and now this is the second part to institutionalize them to be ready for um, prison. Had a mother called me about two weeks back. The mother called me up hysterical. She called me up crying by the fact that her son had got stopped three times. You know what she was afraid of? She wasn't afraid of the criminals or the thugs. She was afraid that her son, after being stopped and searched, 21 years old, work every day, coming home from work, he gets stopped his third time, he gets stopped handling his groin and stuff, throwing him against the wall. He's now so angry when he gets home, she's afraid he's going to have a violent outburst at the next stop and frisk, but Lisa going to kill her son. We hope for a better day. We have no faith in a better day. And at this point, as someone who, you know, did a lot of good works, <laughs> Uh, on uh, for the people, on behalf of the state, I really begin to wonder if I labored in vain. Also adding urgency to the protest were recent shootings and killings of unarmed African-American men, including 16-year-old Trayvon Martin by self-appointed neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman in Florida, 18-year-old Romarley Graham, who was shot dead by police in his grandmother's Bronx home, and retired Marine Kenneth Chamberlain who was shot dead in his own Westchester, New York apartment. Family members from the Martin, Graham, and Chamberlain family took part in the march. The stop and frisk policy has come under increasing criticism, and local elected officials and community leaders have appealed to state and federal authorities to intervene. Last week, Bloomberg invoked the civil rights movement in defense of the practice, but also said he will decrease the number of stop and frisks. Organizers decided on a silent march as an escalation, invoking the first silent march that took place in 1917 against lynchings and police brutality to put even more pressure on the Bloomberg administration to end stop and frisk. However, some disagreed with the tactic. A uh, silent march? I think it's a silent march because it's the Upper West Side. I think people should be screaming their freaking heads off. You know, I stop taking it. Stop being complicit in your own destruction. And though the vast majority of the march was silent, at times young people began chants against the NYPD's policies. When the march was over, hundreds of youth rallied and chanted in front of the mayor's residence. Police beat protesters to clear the area, resulting in several arrests. Reporting for Waging Nonviolence, this is Jessel Noor in New York.